time. Uh, but we but we kept working hard, and it's something that I'm I'm used to doing. And one day, I put a guy named Bobby Rahal on the spot, and uh, he's a past Indy 500 champion, past uh, champion in IndyCar. <clears throat> I put him on the spot, and I said, "Hey, would you be willing to run me in a race car on your team? Would you be willing to start up a team for me?" And he said yes. I thought, "Gosh, why didn't I try this earlier?" <laughs> So he started up a race team for me, and we started to have some. Uh, we started to have some success. We started to to start to make a good impression out there. But what really started to kick into high gear was the media. And so all of a sudden, what seemed to be something I didn't even notice to something that might be hurting me is now helping me. And now it seems like being a girl is actually a really awesome thing. So I'm glad I was patient. <laughs> and it was, uh, the media started asking me this one question about who my, who my role model was or who my idol was. And uh, it was always a weird question for me because I never really had one. I always wanted to be the first me, not the next somebody else. And I guess maybe I kind of always knew I was different. And so I'm, I was... Um, I was finally grateful to be a girl. I was finally, finally, finally able to use it to my advantage. And in the second year of the uh, Formula Atlantic Championship, which is a feeder series to the, to the IndyCar series, um, I finished third in the championship, and my boss, Bobby, moved me up, and I was going IndyCar racing. So finally, my, my dreams were coming true, and we started off the season fairly well. We, uh, the third race I was in was the was the Japan 300, which I would go on to later win. And um, <clears throat> I, was, I found myself vying for the pole position in Japan. And I, I just missed it by the littlest bit to an old friend from go-karting named Sam Hornish Jr. I went on to finish fourth at that race. And then we pick up at the Indy 500, which is my fourth IndyCar race. It really was like a, like a fairy tale month. Every single time I came in from the track, I mean every time, including rookie orientation, when there is only about five cars out there running, there was a huge cheering section for me. I could see them cheering for me when I'd pull in down the back straight and go inside, a t go, in, go on the pit lane and turns three and four. Everybody pumping their fists in the air. And I'd come into my pit stall and, let's face it, it's got about 700 plus horsepower and it's pretty loud. So when people ask if I heard the crowd, I heard the crowd when I stopped the car in my pit box. Uh, so I, I just got such a, such a warm welcoming. And the, 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 media, the media blitz started. And they followed me everywhere. And the opportunities just kept popping up every single day at Indy. And so it was, uh, it was very exciting. And to nearly have the pole position, if not for a little hiccup in turn one, which could have easily been in the wall, I saved it and managed to start fourth for the Indy 500. And then to keep that going and to, to lead just right up until the final laps of the Indianapolis 500. If it would have been just a little warmer in qualifying and it wouldn't have been so slippery, and if I'd have just had another gallon of gas, <laughs> well, maybe I wouldn't be here today. And that wouldn't be good either. So I believe that everything happens for a reason. And so the Indy 500 came and went, and all of a sudden, Danica Mania was born. And it's been an amazing ride of everybody dissecting, analyzing, loving, hating, judging, you name it. Everything that I do is, uh, is broken down. But I've learned to really embrace all of it. Embrace all that I am, all that, all that I am, being a girl, being different, being unique. And let's face it, if somebody is different and unique, it's a story. Just ask Jeremy Lin <laughs> or Tim Tebow. But it's really great, and I'm very fortunate. And um, I no longer be was just Danica Patrick, the driver. I'm Danica Patrick, the girl driver. And that's OK. People ask if I like being called Danica Patrick, a girl driver. And I said, well, whether you call me Danica Patrick, the driver that's a girl, or Danica Patrick, the girl driver, you're saying all the same words, and you mean all the same thing. And it's about intention. If you say it in a, in a mean way, then you know what? I can't help you. 
but, uh, but, but I love everything that it stands for, and I love being unique, and I love being different. And so, um, you know, I always encourage everyone to embrace all that's different about them, and that really is what you need to use. You need to not hide that. You need to use it and take advantage of it and, and give all that you have to offer. And I've never asked for special treatment along the way, and I'm never going to hide the fact that I'm a girl, ever. That's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> So as I move into my, my new chapter of racing, being a full-time NASCAR driver, I'm going to do it with the same will and energy and the same Danica that I am when I was in go-karting to when I was in England to when I was in Indy cars. I'm going to be the best Danica that I can be. Thank you. <laughs>